Do you know that super creamy sauce you see in your lasagna or maybe in some macaroni and cheese? Well, it's called bechamel and it's only three ingredients and it's gonna be ready in less than 10 minutes. Hello everyone, I'm Chef Sabrina. I teach you cooking and baking techniques through fun and delicious recipes. So if you're into that, please consider subscribing and ring the bell. In this, my friends, is actually a base recipe. It's the base for so many other sauces in so many other dishes, many dishes probably that you've eaten your entire life and maybe you didn't realize that the base of the sauce was actually a bechamel or a milky, creamy, delicious, thick sauce. So the first thing that we're gonna do today is talk about the pot that you're gonna use. Now, obviously, I understand you're gonna use whatever you have, but I wanna show you what would be ideal. All right, so ideally, you're gonna have small to medium sized stainless steel pot. There's a reason for that, and I'll tell you in a second. And then that has a thick bottom, all right? We want the heat to be transferred uh, all throughout the surface or the bottom of our pot so that we don't get big spots of heat. That will also depend on your stove, but a thick bottom will have the heat transfer much more evenly throughout, all right? And then stainless steel, because eventually at some point, we're gonna start using a whisk, which is also metal. And so if it's Teflon, we might ruin it. Um, or if it's another metal, we might actually add metal to our food. So we don't want that. So hopefully you have something that is stainless steel and with a thick bottom. Okay, now let's talk about the ingredients. Super simple. It's butter and flour, and it's gonna be equal parts by weight, and then milk. And then of course some salt and white pepper. We're using white pepper so that we don't see the black specks. We want a super creamy light sauce, all right? Um, so the butter and the flour will become what is known as a roux, and that will be our thickening agent, all right? We want it equal parts by weight, but don't worry because the recipe and everything will be on my website or through the link in my Instagram profile. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is actually heat my butter, melt it, and then I'm gonna add the flour and we're gonna cook it until what it's known as a blonde roux, like me, all right? Because it's gonna add thickness to our sauce, but not color. So we wanna keep it really light in color. So a lot of people, for example, my mom, don't like making bechamel because they feel like they always get lumps. Now, in order to prevent lumps, there's one key, key, key thing that you cannot miss. And that is to have both the roux and the milk hot. Obviously the roux is hot because we just cooked it, right? So that is a no brainer, but then the milk has to be hot. And if we were making a velute, which is another mother sauce, then the stock would have to be hot. Avelute is simply the same bechamel, but made with a chicken stock or maybe a beef stock. You can even make it with fish or, or a vegetable stock. And it's basically going to be a thickened sauce made with stock instead of milk. So in this case, milk, hot, hot, hot. I put it in the microwave. So if you wanna do it in a little uh, pot on the side, you can do that. But I just put it in the microwave and it's really hot. Then the other key, we have to change from a spatula, my baby spatulas that everybody loves, that I have so many of, um, to a whisk. And this is why we want a stainless steel. That's, this is the moment where I said we were gonna switch to a whisk. Because we're going to, this is what we're gonna do. We're going to add a little bit of the milk, maybe a third or a little bit more. We're gonna mix it really, really, really well, okay? We're gonna mix it really well until we see that there are no lumps. And then we add everything at once, everything else at once, all right? That's how we're gonna prevent lumps. And if you still have lumps, which it's very rare, and I don't think you will, I'll give you some troubleshooting afterwards. But let's get started. So I have my roux, right? Now I'm gonna add some of my milk, and I'm gonna whisk very vigorously until I see that everything has dissolved, all right? And I get no lumps. So the roux, maybe I can actually increase the heat a little bit. Mixing, 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 and you're gonna see actually that your sauce starts to thicken immediately. So that's when you have to whisk very vigorously and you can actually see very easily if there are any little pieces of roux left. 
So you get rid of them, okay? And now you can add the rest all at once. Okay? And now we combined everything very well. Now it's liquid again and we have to season, right? Now, I really like to add sometimes a bay leaf, like a dry bay leaf um, in here if I know I'm gonna be doing something with meat, like a lasagna. Um, otherwise, afterwards, you can season it maybe with some nutmeg. I'm gonna add a pinch of white pepper. Like I said, white, we don't want black because we don't wanna see the specks. We want this to be pristine and very white. All right, and that's it. Like now, as soon as it comes to a boil, I'm gonna lower it, cook it for another maybe minute and a half, and it's done. It is done. It's how, I mean, how long did that take us? Like nothing. And the ingredients are super simple as well. Now, what do we have to do? Taste, 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 right? We're not magicians, we're just cooking here. We have to taste. So before it thickens, let me see. Mm, perfect with salt, doesn't need anything. So while this boils, let me just tell you about the sauce. After it's done, you can flavor it also with some nutmeg, which goes really, really well with spinach. Like if you wanna make like a spinach gratin, you add a little bit of nutmeg at the end and it goes delicious with spinach. Um, you can actually add, obviously, some Parmigiano Reggiano cheese and you have like this insanely good creamy cheesy sauce, which is perfect for the macaroni and cheese, like the one I made and it's on my Instagram, so you can see that. It's made with bechamel. And what else? Um, you can actually flavor it with so many things. You can even add spices to it, all right? It is very basic good. Like it is the base for so many sauces. You can mix this with a little bit of uh, hollandaise sauce, which is also on my Instagram. I teach you how to make the hollandaise sauce on my Instagram. Um, you, can make it, you can mix it with velute. You can just make maybe a delicious creamy mushroom chicken dish in the oven with some of this. I mean, it is so versatile and it's almost coming to a boil. I don't wanna heat it up too, too much because I don't want it to burn on the bottom. I want it to come to temperature. And I can see that it actually starts to thicken even before it's boiling. Now, let's talk about maybe some troubleshooting. If you still have lumps, but it's gonna be very rare, just strain it. If you still have lumps after that, which is like impossible, but you can put it in a blender and just blend them, all right? So that way you don't lose any of that thickness. Um, notice that I'm mixing once in a while, but I'm not like there, you know, like going crazy in, on top of it. All right, this came to a boil. I'm gonna lower it. And I'm just gonna cook it for another minute and we're done. All right, so came to a boil. We cooked it for a couple of minutes and that's it. That is it, my friends. That's your bechamel sauce. So I'm gonna transfer it here so that you see how it looks. Okay. Look, look at that. No lumps, no lumps. But like I said, even if you do get lumps for whatever reason, just, so what? Just strain it, it's gonna be delicious anyway. Just make sure that you control the heat so that it doesn't burn on the bottom because if it does burn on the bottom, I do have to say, unfortunately, you're gonna have to throw it away because this thing keeps smoking. Been there, done that, my friends. If the bottom burns, that flavor will permeate throughout, all right? Now, another really nice test to see if it's ready or if it's thick enough, but we can see that it's super thick. If by inserting a spoon, okay, 
into my sauce and I can, even though this is gonna be hot and I'm gonna burn myself, but see, I draw a line on my spoon and if the line stays, which you can see that it did stay, that means it's ready. And now, taste, 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 right, again. Mm. Oh, a little bit of pasta, a little bit of Parmesan cheese. That's it. That is it. It is so good. It is so simple. It takes three ingredients plus salt and pepper, but who counts that as ingredient? <laughs> it's necessary, but come on. And a pot, a whisk, maybe 10 minutes by the time that we measure everything and we cook it. Now, know a few things about this. As it cools, it will thicken more. So if you see that it is actually too liquid for you right now, just don't panic, all right? See, even right now, it starts to thicken and it's just been out of the pot for just a few seconds. So look, it will thicken as it cools, all right? So just give it some time until it cools to actually see its consistency. Again, how do we troubleshoot this? Well, say you want it thinner because you're making maybe the chicken with uh, mushrooms and you want it more saucy, all right? Then you actually just add a little bit of milk or maybe a little bit of heavy cream, which will make it a little richer, but still thinner. What happens if you want to perhaps make it thicker? Well, you can grab your pot aside and add maybe a quarter of the amount of roux of butter and flour and a little bit of milk, just uh, dissolve the, the butter, add the flour, make a little roux, add a little milk, and then that little paste you add to the rest and you bring it to a boil again, okay? And that will thicken it. It's just, you're basically just adding a little bit more uh, roux or like a higher percentage of roux to the milk. Then another thing, when we store it, we wanna make sure that we add some plastic wrap touching the surface of the bechamel because it tends to create a skin very easily. It's not the end of the world, all right? If you cover it right away, the steam will, uh, will prevent it also from making a skin. You can also maybe rub a little bit of butter like we do with pastry cream sometimes. You rub a little bit of butter on the top to kind of create a seal uh, or a film, a butter film that will prevent that skin from forming. But if it happens, just remove it give it a mix. When you heat it up, it will probably go away anyway. Um, and that's basically it. I mean, pretty simple, right? Three ingredients, like I said, a pot, a whisk, and about 10 minutes. So I really hope you enjoy it. I'm gonna double dip because this is mine, so who cares? And taste it again because why not? I hope you like it. I hope you make it. Let me know if you make it and what dishes do you make with it because it's so good, right? I want to know, write it on the comments below, and I hope you make it with your family and your friends. Stay safe, and I'll see you the next time with more techniques and delicious recipes.